Hello, it's Dr. Abayo Ajayi live. And my name is Dr. Abayo Ajayi. Wow. So much has happened in this week, in a couple of weeks. Everything is about COVID-19. Um, it's, it's, it's what a time to be in the world. Well, we thank God for everything. And I hope you're keeping all the laws. You are staying, using hand sanitizers. And please, cover your nose and mouth when you go out. What I say is that this whole thing, we still don't understand it enough. But one thing is that we must protect ourselves. Social distancing is a must. Well, step by step, we need to understand what this, because on a daily basis, I get to discuss this with patients. And what I see is that probably we're not discussing at the point that the best point when you a patient suddenly finds out that she cannot use her ex in a state of shock she's tried to take in so many things and we know that by nature everybody will want to have their own genetic children but you know what there's some people that this is the only way that they can have their own children so we're going to go over this today this recipient cycle is also known as either egg the embryo is the combination of the sperm and the eggs so when the egg when the woman and the man they have a problem either there is no sperm at all from the man or the sperm count is very very bad and then you need to use donor sperm and then you need to use donor egg at the same time that you can use because the commonest form of this recipient cycle is for you us to you either we're using donor eggs so what is this? What are we talking about? It's the process by which a woman donates eggs to enable another woman to conceive as part of assisted reproductive treatment. We usually call it a form of third party reproduction. Third party in the sense that another person is introduced in the family about. Many IVF clinics will have about 30 to 40 percent of their treatments as recipient cycle. You know? Now the history, the first child from egg donation was born in 1983 in Australia. Don't forget the first baby from IVF was born in 1978 in the UK, but the first baby from egg donation was from Australia in 1983. And prior to this, women who have reached treatment, ah, well, wait for this, she was 74, she's an Indian lady who last year had um, uh, babies in September last year. Uh, she was 74 and the husband was 78. Well, wives, they were rejoicing. The husband and the two of them finally ended up in intensive care unit. And that tells you some things about being, what is, because sometimes people ask me what is too old. Sometimes, uh, I, I, one day of birth, then we, we can know how, what is going to happen to looking after these children. Now, where do we, because this is another question, where do we get this eggs from? What kinds of egg donation? is possible and we usually have two very popular ones and the third one we have known egg donors okay known egg donors in the sense that the person who is going to donate is no clinic all right the second group is the unknown which usually the IVF clinics will provide for you we there was a third variety which now is not too common anymore we used to call this egg sharing. Uh, many years ago, we, a lot of clinics tried it, uh, but the results were not as good as either using known or known donor egg. So many people don't do it again, but some clinics still do it. So there are three, two main types and a third one, the known donation or egg donation, the unknown egg donation or the donor, and then the egg sharing, which is, egg sharing was that you want to do IVF, you cannot afford it, you are young, you can share your eggs with somebody who can afford it, whose eggs are not. Age is one of the commonest reasons why people have to use egg donors. It's true that we see a lot of people, celebrities in their 50s, especially the, in the US, who have babies in their 50s. But you know what? 99.9% .9 of them use donor eggs. It's just that nobody talks about this. But Again, it is not when you have reached menopause alone that you need to. My cycles are still very regular. You know what? If a 52-year-old is going to do IVF, 
99.9% of the time, she will use donor eggs. So it's not only that your menses are stopped, but also the fact that your eggs might not be very viable simply because of age. All right? The other group are people who reach menopause prematurely. They sometimes they're in their 30s, you know, and they reach menopause. And so there are some people like that. They also will need egg donation. Some women are also born without ovaries, you know. And such women, sometimes they've never menstruated in their lives, or some just menstruated a few times and then they stopped. Typically, we call th this when women are born without ovaries, it's part of what we call Turner syndrome. So book, Instagram and Twitter, so that you can raise awareness. This is a very interesting topic, and I want as many people as possible to partake in this, because this is one discussion we have almost all the time. Now, the other group of people that might benefit from use of donor eggs are those whose ovaries have either been damaged or surgically removed. All right? Damage inadvertently, the ovary, the blood supply to the ovaries, it's affected. Especially people who have ovarian cyst. Sometimes this blood supply to the ovaries is affected. Especially people who have endometriosis. And that's why we say that if you're going to start having repeated surgery for endometriosis or fibroids, please store your eggs. And then in the hurry to ligate or cut off the ectopic, sometimes it's possible that part of the blood supply of the ovary is compromised. All right? And then, of course, for people who are having chemotherapy for cancer, you know, it's important also because this, most of the time, by the time they finish with the chemotherapy, their fertility is also gone. So it is at the end of the day when they survive the cancer. We know that cancer survival is becoming more and more rampant now. And then some group of people, this is even the most challenging group of people, implantation. They're doing IVF, all right? But the, the, the fertilization, they just can't, either the, the, it's so poor, it's 10%, 20%. Fertilization should be in the region of 70 to 80 percent. Okay, so when they have repeated fertilization gone well, and they are 42, they are 44, and and you know I remember a patient of mine that like this, who was I think she was about 45, but she she had polycystic ovaries and was producing a lot of eggs, 17 eggs at about 45. You can imagine, but the quality of the eggs were not good, and she had done IVF. So many we have the babies uh, now. Now, uh, Akabi Oduak, Shannon Opanachi, thank you for joining on Facebook. Kemo Queen, Amim, Avina 1010, Tomisi Akogbe, Ronki Feed, Miss 50, Olive, in this age thing. Because that is one discussion we have all the time. I, I know that nobody wants to use eggs from another person. All right. Well, if you've been following my drift, you see that in some people, this is the only way that they can have their own children. All right. And but the, the question some of them ask, or uh, and I say no. You see, it's like becoming gray, which is part of the aging process. If you like, you if you are gray, you can decide to dye it. It doesn't change the fact that you are gray. You can decide to go bald, shave it off. It does not change the fact that you are you are gray. And therefore, it's the same thing with the egg problem. So I try and month after month, they start using part of this month during their cycles. And they're supposed to be fertile until about five to 10 years before they reach menopause. So if, in exam if for example, it depends, this now changes from one person to another. Now, but this, you, if you remember, we've been saying this, that this fertility peaks well, starts declining at 30s. It's noticeable, very, very noticeable at 35 years. Okay? By 40 years, it's, it's, it's uh, if you remember what I said, the fertility is between 5, it's about 48. But, okay, let's say even say it's 50. Then, by the time you're 40, you're actually hitting the point that fertility is about to stop. Now, the confusing thing this, this time with health, now they live longer, they look better, they say 
60 is now the new 40. Oh, you can say anything, but fertility does not regard that. It's not a matter of how you look. It's not a matter of how you feel. It's a yes. And sometimes this decline even takes a big deal. So you're looking very good. You're 38, but, and you look 28 maybe, but your fertility when they're making their decisions, okay? Well, if you want me to paint it a little bit 20s, try to get pregnant or let's say in their 30s okay when fertility is peak now we're not talking about IVF 20 of them will get pregnant the others have to wait for the next cycle okay now but this same group of people they say when when they're in their 40s only about five IVF is the same materials that we're using and that's why sometimes we say that your success it depends on the couple themselves, especially the eggs that we're getting. And they, so this whole thing, we've been able to understand in these embryos as they grow up, which the percentage of the aneuploid means abnormal number of chromosomes. And this is dependent on the age of the eggs. Now, if you're using donor eggs, this reverses everything. And donor eggs gives you the success rate of boyhood of 45 to about 50 percent sometimes even 60 and this can even be made better if you have many eggs and therefore many embryos and you can even have frozen embryo transfer from the use of donor eggs then that even makes it better when we talk about the risk we're talking about the risk to the donor and this risk it's very minimal you know in IVF we say that complications are rare but they are real okay they rarely occur, but when they occur, then it takes that you must almighty OHSS, which is upper stimulation, which rarely occurs now, because we have so many uh, uh, regimen now that does not really uh, lead to hyper stimulation. Then the, some people ask me, okay, what about long-term effect on donors? Is there any effect on donors? Well, as in IVF, the, because what you're doing actually is IVF. Do, we've seen that it was a study sometimes in the UK that some people said they regretted donating when they were younger. Yeah, but that's the only thing, is a feeling, okay, a perception. But one question that donors sometimes ask is, will this make me to hit menopause early? And the answer is, donor egg work. Well, for people who are doing the donor egg, you know, we've been talking more of the donor more than the recipient now. Now for the re recipient, actually, it's m if a recipient who has done IVF before, they'll tell you that this recipient, now the process involved in this recip uh, recipient cycle is the first thing, you must have a donor. Depends on a known donor, the IVF clinic or an agency attached to the IVF clinic is giving you the donor. Now, wh whoever, if you're using a known donor, in this part of the world, we do not identify the donors. We don't have characteristics. For example, you might say you want somebody this tall, someone fair in complexion, probably somebody from a particular tribe of your donor. We can do that. Now, once we have identified a donor for you, the first thing we do with the donor is to cancel them. They need to understand the implication of what they're doing. And then HIV, hepatitis, syphilis, hepatitis both B and C, and then we do some genetic screening, especially for people like for genotype to see that, you know, that um, for some people also who are sometimes concerned because one of the things that I hear sometimes is that are you sure that this donor is not going to pass a genetic disease into my family? There is also, I have good news for you, you can screen for your, the donor, you can screen the donor too because you know the sperm and the eggs have to come together. We have to screen the, the, the man in the union also to be able to see that they don't have the same, the same kind of mutants. So once we have finished with the screening, everybody is in the clear, then consent from Leslie, what she is doing. And you also understand, and your partner also understands. So. Some people, sometimes I get some people saying, I don't want my partner to know that I'm using donor eggs. It can never happen. Now, the recipient also goes through some 
pre-treatment testing, so we have to test the, the recipient to be sure, depending on our age, also we might have finally forms. And then we might have to look at the uterus and see that there is nothing wrong with the uterus if we transfer the embryo and it can go in the uterus. Then once that is done, then we start stimulating the donor. He's doing something great. Uh, it's helping a couple, you know, she's producing the eggs that she's not going to use. We use the safest regimen that's possible to avoid the complication. This is ovarian hyper stimulation for them. And for this recipient also, she starts to prepare a uterus to receive the embryos. You know, the difference between the drugs here is that majority of the drugs now are oral drugs, unlike the injectable. And this is where this is done. We now scan to see that our endometrium is ready. As we are scanning the donor to see that she's progressing with egg production, we also scan the recipient to see that our endometrium is ready. Then on the day that we're going to bring out the eggs, you know, the e eggs are brought out on the, and then she's good to go. On the day of, we're going to bring out the eggs also, the man gives us the semen sample, but if it's going to be donor sperm, yes, we will have made provision for that and then we get the sperm, and then we fertilize the eggs, and, and then we do the embryo transfer, either the three or the five. We know that uh, this um, embryo transfer does not require any form of sedation, but it's about the most important step in IVF. No matter how the work you have done, if the um, transfer does not go right, weeks we do a pregnancy test. If you can see this, it requires a lot of coordination, but not to worry, that's what we do on a daily basis, and so we're used to doing that. And then what is the legal status or what is the, the process itself? Does it, is it backed by law, all right? This differs from one country to another. For example, in Germany and Italy, it's totally illegal. Nobody does that there, you know? But in Austria, to the donor. In Canada, you must reveal the identity of the donor and you must not pay any compensation to the donor. But in Spain, but this is usually not, be, not payment, but you're compensating for inconveniences and the expenses that she must have incurred. And you can, own, you can pay for out-of-pocket expenses. Now, in Nigeria, there are no laws for this, but we tend to follow, to an extent, the British in this. What, so it's a, it's a known way of reproduction. And we've had some people that probably they win the lottery and they're going to America or something like that. We have questions and then uh, so that I can probably just call it a day. Uh, one of the questions that I get to ask is, okay, and then I'll take some of your own questions as well. Okay, maybe the, I'll take some of your questions first and then I'll take frequently is it worth trying when all the tests come back or can, uh, age 40 but yeah but it's it's uh, it's it's worth trying retriever from the donor well w so w there is no difference whether it's donor eggs whether it's your own eggs the process of IVF is just the same the, the difference is where the, the indication for me what I say to many people is but the three also gives pregnancies and the, really and truly if you Compare them embryo for embryo. There is clear cut answer for that. Many people will play five day five, but sometimes what about if you don't have enough embryos? So maybe a day three might. The fact that using donors sometimes also you can have uh, a curve ball thrown at you, so you don't have enough embryos, you know, because probably the sperm is not very good. By the time you put this. Uh, sperm to fertilize the egg. The embryos that you have are likely to be of better quality because the egg quality is good. So I'm going to go to the two questions. One, some, most of the questions that we get is that can the donor claim the child? You know, and we, it's not possible for the donor to claim the child in the sense that went to any clinic and no consent form was signed for, and they're using donor eggs. It's important because that is what will protect you finally. Because the donor will have signed that she cannot lay claim to the product. From, and most of the time, these consent forms are drafted by lawyers. Now, the other question that I get is that 
which is one of the questions that people never tell you, they never ask you, well, which is always running in their mind, will the baby look like me? You know, that's one of the reasons we see some people, they say, you say, you need donor eggs. They say, no, 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 I don't want to use donor eggs. I don't. When you get to the end of it all, one of the things that is bothering them is, will the baby look dead in their fertility journey? And they form the group. I'm going to tell you more about this group at the end of the program. I'm sure you must have heard so me talking about this group on different occasions. They call themselves fertility. Mm -hmm. I've done this kind of treatment. And they're able to talk to you. They're able to show you their children. And you will not, you'll be surprised. Because there's so many things we still do not know on how baby, what makes baby to, babies from years. And you know that they are not related. So there, there's so many things about looks that we really don't understand yet. So sometimes if that is your problem, I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, so, fertility counselors, talk to one today, or talk to the, uh, the uh, support groups, people who have gone through it and let them advise you also. Now, I have a question which, uh, if the result is correct, what he's saying is that you probably belong to that group that would. Uh, have you seen that program, My Fertility Path? Well, if you have not seen, the first episode was on Thursday, My Fertility Path on Ebony Live TV, on Thursday at 7 p.m. It's a show dedicated to infertility. And this next episode, we're talking about, she had her triplets when she was 57. Listen to her, and I'm sure this will also help you if you are about to pull that trigger. Uh, thank you so much for watching today, and uh, 